deadly infectious outbreak in major U.S. city. 20 dead so far quarantine tents being set up now. California is one state which has led the charge against President Donald Trump's crackdown on immigration, by deliberately giving illegals a sanctuary to escape to after crossing the southern border into the United States. With that as their priority, they inadvertently invited in much more than a flood of new residents which Trump had warned about. San Diego did things their way and now are suffering the horrific cost of that detrimental decision. The city is now dealing with a horrific hepatitis outbreak, in part stemming from the terrible conditions that many of the city's homeless have been dealing with. Three industrial-sized tents were opened up for the homeless in an effort to contain the outbreak. Two giant tents that were larger were opened up later in the month. In total, Approximately 350 single men and women could be held there. It is projected that approximately two more will be opened up again to deal with the increasing demand. One is specifically made for families and the other will be made for veterans. In total, they should all be able to hold 700 people collectively. 20 people so far have been killed due to the hepatitis A outbreak. It is the worst outbreak of its kind in over 20 years. The virus itself is expected to have been contained and contracted from feces. Since many homeless people defecate in the street it is not at all uncommon that homeless people could contract it that way, Bob McElroy of the Alpha Project said. There's going to be a marked difference in what we see on the streets today and what we see at this time next year. The nonprofit helped to fundraise for and open the tent that opened just this past Friday. It was created because of not only the outbreak but increasing numbers of homeless people. If this strain of hepatitis is found on the street and the number of homeless people is continuing to rise then it is not a ridiculous theory to say that this outbreak number will continue to rise as well. The Daily Mail reported. Verna Vassbinder, 47, was among the first to move from the campground. She rolled in with her little black dog, Lucy Lua, on the seat of her walker with a cardboard sign hanging off the back that read, Don't touch the dog. The human bites. She plopped down on her bunk bed and already felt lucky to be finally under a roof. My bones were hurting very badly sleeping on the ground, said Vassbinder, who has been homeless for six years. And the do moisture in the morning. Phew. I'm out of the cold, off the ground and I'll be feeling better in a few days. All I need is to rest in a bed. Mayor Kevin Falconer, who welcomed her to the tent, said the goal is to move 65% of the occupants into permanent housing. The city had to divert $6.5 million budgeted for permanent housing to fund the operation of the tents for seven months. The tents will provide an array of services from mental health care to housing navigators. But the city still faces an acute housing shortage for the poor. Falconer has earmarked more than $80 million in funds to address the problem. Gemma Librato lives a block away from the tent that opened Friday. She said she is glad to see the streets being cleaned up but she worries it may attract more homeless. Last Sunday, a homeless man high on drugs and with a bleeding hand ran into her apartment when she opened the door and locked himself in the bathroom. She and her six-year-old son ran out and called the police. The man broke things in her bathroom, left blood stains on the floor and scared her. If this makes things more orderly then I support this she said. But I'm worried. I don't want this to bring in more homeless to the area and people using drugs. There are families with children around here. Look at some of the people who have been affected.